go down to Kentucky and check on the case. When I'm back, we're gonna go hunting. Do some fishing. Get away from all this stuff. I appreciate the friendship. It means a lot to me. She kind of shy. 
Yeah. Have you came to fix the roof on top of me? Yes, I have. Why? Because I think it needs fixing. Thanks. You're welcome. You all here just with your mom? And Papa, but he's not home. He works in the mines. No mother or brother, he's sick. Mom's just sick? What kind of sick? I don't know, just sick. Maybe I should say hello to him and cheer him up or something. Sure, come on in. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Walter. How you doing? You drawing a picture? What's this one here? Is it a helicopter or a UFO? He's shy. It's not a helicopter. This is a UFO. That's what I thought. You see a lot of them around here. He's sick. I'm not. How long's a boy been sick like this? What kind of sickness should I have? It's kind of rash. Is that the itch or bleed or anything? You get like dizzy and feel like you want to throw up? Mm -hmm. The Reverend said you work on the outside of the house. Yes, sir. The boy was sick. I just came in to cheer him up. Nice to see you, Walter. You're a good artist, too. I'm telling you. Daddy wants to know who the hell he is. Maybe it's time I had a talk with him. No. Have the boy scare him a little first.
Sunday, boy. I was just taking a little Sunday stroll. I guess maybe it's not Sunday. You picked a fine time to take a walk in our marijuana field. It's tough, huh? This is tough. We're, we're deep in country here. Is it kind of like deliverance or something? <laughs> deliverance. <laughs> I guess I should be kind of scared. You got a pretty mouth, boy. <laughs> <laughs> business with you. Watch him, boy. Don't let him do nothing wrong. Oh, my jaw. Tell me to my jaw. Sarah's a nice girl. Sad, though. No. Town don't really take to her. Why is that? A lot of history. People down here don't give up history. Hey, uh, 
How about if I do some fixing on your house? It won't cost you nothing. Sure. But the worst thing to do to me to fix it up, I might like it. Isn't that a good thing? No, I want to move. Why? The house falls apart. That's kind of like a Zen riddle, isn't it? Huh? I'll see you around. All right, then. Uh, yes, it is. But I think you know that, Mr. Taggart. I was noticing that the uh, steps are all kind of broken down and everything. I could get under there and fix it all up. I don't hand out Bibles and it won't cost you nothing. <laughs> well, thank you, but I'm not interested. Thank you. Situation down here. New visitor. You 
You call the fire department when someone lights a cigarette? They only send one idiot down at a time. It's gonna take months before some new guy can do squat. So keep it business as usual and keep him away from it. Jesus, boy, the Marines haven't landed. I got things to do. See, Lloyd, I know exactly what my daddy wants. Business as usual. So, I don't want to see him on my street, and I don't want to see him in my church. Sir, how you doing? I'm good, thanks, Delbert. Look, uh, I only sold six jars of your honey this week. Uh, you you want to put that against your groceries? Yes, please. about what she said about my porch. Would you still consider fixing it? What made you change your mind? It broke this morning. I'll be there. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a nice day, ma'am. Contest at the street fair Saturday night, Mr. Tech and Patsy and I are going to be doing some singing. 
Why don't you come by and vote for us? What do you give me? My sister. All right. Okay, deal. <laughs> hey, we heard you were helping out Sarah Kellogg. It's really nice of you after what she did to her daddy, you know. We're not supposed to talk about that. She's just another one of God's children. Look what the cat did. How you doing, sir? Morning. You should hear these young, small town girls. The way they gossip or something, isn't it? Probably saying good, too. Do they? How about that porch? Oh, Lord, Mr. Tiger, I, I, I just got over the flu. Let, let me think about it. Think about what? I think about how you guys got to wrecking your truck. Lord. You know, a lot of folks don't appreciate a fella like you coming up here, sticking her nose in places that don't belong. You need to be careful about slinking around here. Somebody's like would think you're an animal, that's you. Now, you understand what he's saying, don't you? Somebody's gonna get hurt showing us. You mean someone might get hurt? You could be an English teacher, probably, except you don't understand plain English, do you? Get out. Get out? That's pretty plain English. Get out. Believe it or not, a bunch of people up here in Appalachia like me. They like me to stick around, and I've decided I'm gonna stick around for a while. I've also decided that if you don't like it, that's tough shit. I got your tough shit right here. You know, sometimes two's not enough. You want to see if you call a few more folks around here? We got it, right? Just the right folks. Folks ain't gonna talk about him. People up here don't like to talk. You know that. I also know that this man supports your church, and the church probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his support. You're a good man, Reverend. One of these days you'll put two and two together, and you'll say, the money ain't worth what's gonna do to my people. And I think you'll come around to that, Reverend.
like some weather coming in. I better get back to work. I'm out of nails. Well, I could get those for you. Just on the top of the front seat of the car there. Coming up. Top seat. Top seat. Mountains are the most beautiful thing on earth. Most church charity types talk about God, how they walk with God, how they found God. They talk at you instead of to you, and they never ask your opinion. That's all you do. You a cop, right? Not exactly, but something like that. I work for the federal government. I was told that somebody's dumping some dangerous toxic waste down here. See if I can come down and stop it. Yeah, I won't stop it too. You still want to fix my porch? Yes, sir, I'll do that. You ever seen anybody doing any dumping up here of any kind? Well, I've seen a lot of weird lights over there sometimes at night. Uh, helicopter and stuff like that. Uh, my steps need fixing too. I could do that. You know, that card boy was talking to me about seeing some lights up there in them hills. I think it's helicopters. I think maybe somebody's dumping something up there. You know a way we can get up there? No, but I can show you something. Watch out for these rocks. They're slick. 
There you go. That fish have worked. It happens after a big rain, young ones are dying. It's been going on like this for months, and it's got worse lately. And I didn't think you knew anything about fish. My Uncle Earl told me never tip your hand too early in a card game. You're guaranteed to lose. That's good advice. That's good advice. You the one who sent me that letter? Yes, sir, I sent it. Well, now that you know who I am and I know who you are, I'm gonna head on into town. You wanna ride? Make it some charity event. Celebrities love that shit. They draw the paper like flies. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake, now what? Well, what do you think? You want to tell me what's going on in one small town in the middle of nowhere and why you can't handle it? I am handling it. Shit, boy. Cover up and get the hell out of here, Natalie. I got a meeting. Sure, honey.
But, you know, I'm not much of a say gal. Anyway, this is home. Yeah, I can understand that. I had heard that there's a street dance. You might like to come to that with me. You mean together on a date? Sister's a friend of mine. Damn it, it's good to be home. I'll tell you something about my little sister. She is the best cook in eastern Kentucky, and that's a fact. I'll tell you what, I know the best hunting in this state. I know these mountains, every inch of them. Maybe we'll do some hunting. Up out of here. So, why don't you 
Get back in Oren's car with Oren's little department. Take off. Let's face it, I don't believe in your authority. Maybe you'll believe a gun up your butt. Copy. <laughs> this show. trying to help my boy when you first came. I thank you for that. I'm sorry about before. I know you had your reasons. I have mine. These are my daddy's maps. I want to help.
answer if you want. Thank you all. Please be seated. You know, the trouble with rich people is that sometimes they don't care about others. These folks that are making the profits by dumping these toxic waste, petroleum byproducts and stuff like that, they're the ones making the profit. Why don't they dump that in their own backyard? When instead, they pay some poor dumb shit, forgive me, Father, $5 an hour to truck this up into the mountains of Appalachia. Why? Because they think you all are ignorant, barefoot, poor dumb hillbillies that don't have the money and the power to fight them back. To these people, you all are insignificant. You mean nothing. And if there's anybody out there who thinks that the $300 that they gave you to buy a new satellite or look the other way is worth selling out the legacy of your ancestors and the future of your children, please raise your hand. You see, I don't see no hands. Please think about this. You know why I'm here. And let's all come together as one family and fight this. going on with all these barrels. And that's the problem. All these problems seem so big, it's hard to find your way around them. That's why I wanted to keep the church. I thought I could make a difference. I realized church can't help nobody after they're all dead. So I'm gonna make a change. Right in here. And by God, I swear, if you'll drag their sorry ass to court, I'll testify against every last one of them. We might just make a good team then. Right here, sir. 
Three round trip to the new Hanner Casino. My hometown, I ain't never forget it. Hey there, Gilly, how you doing? This guy 
us trouble. See, that's what I was trying Shut to... Shut up. I want the mine sealed, and I want Taggart buried inside it. You know the call. Give this to me. Dad, how am I ever going to take over one day if you don't let me run my own operations? You won't have to. I'm going to live forever. Some kind of a damn fool idiot. 
This guy's gonna sink us all. He don't give a shit about a bunch of backwards country folk in the middle of nowhere. He's gonna try to put me in jail. He's not like that. Sarah, did you sleep with him? What? You whore. <laughs>
I think your daddy found out about that and went to throw you a real bad beating one time, and you killed him. And then you probably went to your little sister and said, little sister, this gun went off by accident, and uh, I'm an adult. And if they convict me and I go to prison, you're going to be left here all alone. So if you take the rap from me, you're a minor. I ain't going to do nothing to you. So you convinced her to do that. And all these years I've run in town is convinced that she's sick and she's crazy and she killed her daddy when you really did it, didn't you? Ain't you slicker than possum shit? You got a sharp mind and a fast man. Hey, Jimmy Joe. Oh, oh, this is Mr. Taggart. He's a government man. With some agency, I don't know what is that, uh, EPA, uh, FDA, FBI, I'm not sure. <laughs> Come down here to show us backwards folks how to, how to do things. These are my buddies. They work down here. I wanted you to meet them because I'm not sure you appreciate what it means to be poor down here, what it means to have to put some bread on the table. Imagine that coat of yours cost more than Cyrus's wages for a month. Damn thing is, Jack, I like you. And I know my sister likes you too. That's why I'm not going to kill you. Randall, you do it.
for you. He's gonna kill you. You all right? We're all killed in the explosion in the mine. We gotta worry about Hannah and those folks. If you're willing to testify, then we can put him in jail for a long time. What do you think? So what that means is it's going to get a little hot around here. I'll make a phone call and see if I can put you in protective custody. In the meantime, we better get back and get out of here. Dick Larson. Yeah, Chick, it's me. Listen, we found the stuff. How big is it? It's the most I've ever seen in one spot. There's been a cave-in, so the pressure on top of that is very unstable. We're going to have to move fast. Also, I've got a witness that's going to need some protective custody out of here. All right, fine. How can I help you? Send me a couple of agents from the witness protection program. See if we could escort her out of here to a safe place. Meet me at the old truck stop on Highway 98. Listen, the cavalry's on his way. You just hang in there. I'll make the call. There they are. I'm going to do that. And get me a mojo head. my woman soup. She can't have the rubber band. Anytime through Special Agent Larson, ma'am. So you go with these gentlemen, they're gonna take good care of you, okay? You go ahead and go with them now. Right. Well, you know where I am. We'll, we'll keep him informed every step of the way. I have a direct line through Chick, all right, baby? Okay? Is that a quick draw rig? Yes, it is. That's kind of odd for a federal agent, isn't it? We're out in the country here, and they kind of let us do what we want to.
boss, I'm coming to get him. You know, on second thought, I'll tell him. Stick around, we're gonna have some fun. Check your five alarm fuck up. What the hell am I paying you for? You want me to find someone else? No, no, listen to me. Dagger doesn't know about me. I want to protect you. I can make sure any investigation that we do on you doesn't go anywhere. Then you oversee the cleanup of the cave in personally. Any problems, you're out of here. Approach the bench. Mr. Hanner, you are accused of dumping 4.1 million barrels of toxic waste 42 times in 13 different locations. How do you plead? Your Honor, Mr. Hanner pleads guilty under the Emergency Planning and Citizens' Right to Know Act. Very well. That's a $25,000 fine. I'm fining you an additional $25,000 for failing to disclose your own company's toxic release inventory. Next case. See, that's what I love about this country. I made 300 million last year and it only cost me 50 grand. Excuse me, can I have a little word with you for a minute? The EPA, they've never been very good at punishing criminals, catching them, helping the environment. I'm not a surprise for you. I quit the EPA. And I quit the EPA so I could spend my every waking moment trying to make your life miserable. We played this one by your rules. And your court decided I was clean. You're violating my constitutional rights. Mr. Hanner, I promise you, as sure as you stand here now, I'm going to show you new meaning to the word violation. How you doing, Jack? Hey, Jack. What are you doing? I didn't expect to see you up here. What's up? I think I know why you expect to see me here. You set up Frank, didn't you? What are you talking about? I mean, if it weren't for you, they'd have never found him. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held. You can't arrest me, Jack. I outrank you. Who do you think you are? I was going to ask you the same thing. You're a piece of shit. And I'm ashamed of you. Hook him up. Yes, sir. Let's go. Oh, no. What are you afraid of? 
afraid of. That's just Mr. Federal Agent, man. What are you gonna do, arrest me for 10 minutes, too? Come here, boy. I wanna talk to you. No, you come here. Don't hide behind that big old pimple. You just get the hell away from me, because you don't have shit on me. Actually, I do have quite a bit on you. But you see, our current judicial system would not provide adequate punishment for you. I think you really deserve to suffer. And since I'm feeling selfish, I've arranged for a way for that to happen. You better leave my friend alone, or I'm gonna have to properly educate you on how to beat the shit out of somebody. Matter of fact, you must be a dumb motherfucker, or you wouldn't still be standing there. He's gonna whip your ass like you're a redhead, <laughs> He's gonna slap you like a red-headed stepchild. I've been all over Appalachia. I've met lots of really fine people. I've never met any people like you guys. You guys are really unique. You've been hanging out with the ignorant people. Let's see, we're educated. I guess education can't buy common sense, you know. I think Junior, if your daddy knew how stupid you were, he'd trade you in for a pet monkey.
out of your heart. All right, Jack, have a seat. Can I get you a drink? I don't drink much. Call me. I haven't met you, but I'm sure you don't care about that. Oren, good luck with this incredibly large fellow. <laughs> situation here now, I realize that the EPA wasn't able to put you away. By the way, I was just kidding when I told you I resigned. I'm still an active agent. These two gentlemen with the FBI, they came to help me serve this warrant. Your son provided us with enough evidence to uh, stack up a lot of years. My son's a real disappointment to me. We've got you on extortion, conspiracy to commit murder, murder and racketeering. We're talking 30 years. That's ugly. That's a long time to go without a woman. You know, I knew you were going to say that. I have a dear friend named Tyrone that has promised me that uh, when you hit prison, he's going to take you under his wing and teach you the most intimate social graces of prison. And you're going to be in good hands, so you won't have to worry about that. Well, that takes care of the woman thing. But you're talking to a 60-year-old man. It still means that probably die in prison. I wish to God I had of Unless you live to be a very, very old man. So I guess uh, that makes killing you free. Well, it would be free if you could. That's fast. Well, come on. Go down. That's real fast. You're under arrest. Put your hands behind your back. <laughs>
When I was a child, my family would travel down to western Kentucky where my parents were born. And there's a backwards old town that's often remembered so many times that my memories are warm. And Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County down by the Green River where paradise lay? Well, I'm sorry, my you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train is all the way Well sometimes we travel right down the Green River to the abandoned old prison down by Avery Hill where the air smell like snakes and we'd shoot with our pistols but empty pop bottles was all we would kill and daddy won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County down by the Green River where paradise lay well I'm sorry my son but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train is all in the way Five miles. 